In the farthest reaches of our solar system, Pluto, a planet that lurks like a small troublemaker, is quiet and icy. This world, once probably listed among the official planets, has become the focus of renewed interest thanks to some eyebrow-raising comments by space science icons Neil deGrasse Tyson and Michio Kaku. According to their recent concerns, Pluto may be moving toward a dangerous encounter with Neptune. But how could such a thing even happen? What are the real consequences if this frosty loner ends up crashing into its much larger neighbor in space? Is this another bizarre turn in the endless space drama, or are we standing at the edge of something truly game-changing? Strap in as we plunge headfirst into the odd and spellbinding possibility of Pluto smashing into Neptune. Pluto may have been demoted to a dwarf planet, but it never left the spotlight of curiosity. Modern scientists closely monitor it, and recent ideas from top minds suggest Pluto's orbital path creeps dangerously close to the planet Neptune. Tyson and Kaku aren't just tossing wild theories. They have every right to be worried that these two cosmic wanderers might one day clash in a big way and that could spell serious consequences, even for us here on Earth. But how on Earth or, to put it another way, how in the universe would that ever happen? Unlike the big planets that orbit the Sun in roughly circular paths, Pluto's path is extremely eccentric. In fact, it takes Pluto nearly 248 years to make one full loop around the Sun. Since we discovered it in 1930, Pluto hasn't even had time to complete one full lap. Yet, that's just the start of its oddities. Pluto doesn't play by the same orbital rules. Instead of gliding along the flat plane most planets share, Pluto's path tilts at an angle of 17 degrees. That makes it orbit as if it were trying to cross the rest of the planets at a weird angle, sort of like a cosmic rebel ignoring traffic lanes. This is made even more fascinating and a little scary by the fact that, for about 20 years in every orbit, Pluto actually swings closer to the Sun than Neptune does. That's correct, the little guy sneaks ahead of the big one. You might naturally ask, wait, why don't they collide with each other? Well, the answer lies in magical gravitational gymnastics. As soon as Pluto was discovered, astronomers got curious about its strange motion. While the other planets glide near the Sun's equator, Pluto's tilted orbit and odd looping path made people scratch their heads. They came to the conclusion that something mind-blowing was happening. Pluto's orbit actually crosses Neptune's. That sounds like a recipe for disaster, right? Wrong. Because the cosmos has some mind-bending rules. One of those rules comes from something called the three-body problem. Imagine attempting to predict how three space objects say Pluto, Neptune, and the Sun pull on each other and move as a result. It's similar to balancing three magnetic balls in zero gravity. It's a mess, but surprisingly organized chaos. Scientists use weird and wonderful terms like non-concurrent libration, orbital wobbling, and precession to explain what's happening. In the case of Pluto, the non-concurrent libration with Neptune essentially means this. When Pluto's path intersects Neptune's, they're never in the same place at the same time. They travel at least 90 degrees apart around the Sun, in a way similar to roommates who never bump into each other because they use opposite schedules. Orbital precession adds another twist. This is Pluto's orbit's gradual wobble as it loops through space. When Pluto gets near Neptune, it's usually way above or below the plane of Neptune's orbit such as passing over someone's head on a trampoline. That height difference acts as a cosmic bridge, keeping Pluto safe and sound. The VZK Wobble is the next issue a delightful mouthful named after three researchers who studied how gravity dances between various objects in space. This wobble helps explain why Pluto can have such a weird path but still follow it regularly over billions of years. Imagine it as an odd space groove that Pluto gets locked into. So, even though it looks like Pluto is bouncing around like a drunken satellite, it's actually tracing a very steady, predictable path. These gravitational checks and balances work together like the most intricate ballet in the world, keeping Pluto and Neptune from bumping into each other. Everything displays how mind-bogglingly complex celestial mechanics are. 
Back in the 1980s, scientists ran computer simulations and discovered that, even with all these stabilizing features, Pluto's orbit is still technically unstable, kind of like a person on a tightrope during an earthquake. Small tweaks to its starting position may lead to wildly different routes for the future. However, over the long haul millions or even billions of years Pluto manages to remain in line. Even cooler is the fact that it's not only Neptune that keeps Pluto in check. Planets as massive as Saturn and Jupiter lend their gravitational muscle, too. Jupiter's pull, in particular, acts like a space bouncer, protecting Pluto from wandering off into trouble. Saturn throws in a bit of support as well. All these forces combine like cosmic referees, making sure Pluto keeps spinning without crashing into anything or flying off into deep space. Without this gravitational teamwork, the solar system could be total mayhem, planets colliding, moons going awry, asteroids gaining freedom. Yikes. Pluto's case shows that its bizarre orbit could have meant doom if not for the invisible dance moves of gravity, keeping everything in harmony. The notion that Neptune and Pluto might one day collide makes it all the more crucial to keep studying these movements. Pluto's journey is a great example of how chaos and order can coexist in stability. It demonstrates that the solar system isn't as neat as we expected more like a massive, delicate machine where every gear has to be in just the right spot or else the whole thing could fall apart. This is what scientists call organized chaos which is basically the idea that a tiny change in a planet's position or speed can result in completely unpredictable outcomes down the road. To figure this stuff out, researchers run thousands of computer simulations modifying Pluto's position slightly and observing what happens. And what they've seen is mind-blowing. One tiny change now can completely reshape Pluto's orbit a few decades later. Still, even with all that chaos, Pluto's orbit remains constant for absurdly long time spans. It reminds me of a cosmic illusion. Although the path appears random, it's actually fairly constant. Predicting this kind of motion, though, is super hard. The further out you try to predict, the more your guesses can be wrong. It's kind of like trying to predict the weather in 100 years. One tiny error at the beginning makes the whole prediction useless. That's why astronomers always leave some wiggle room in their models. They know the universe loves surprises. Neptune, Pluto, and Saturn interact with each other, demonstrating how interconnected everything is. The fate of a tiny planet might depend on a significant one millions of miles away. This brings us back to those contemporary issues. What brings Tyson and Kaku to raise concerns about a possible crash? Now Tyson, who famously helped reclassify Pluto as a dwarf planet, has always been a prominent figure in status regarding the cleanup of our misperceptions about space. He does not consider Pluto's new classification to be an insult but as a much needed update to our cosmic dictionary. His exuberance for science is contagious, and he sees Pluto's messy orbit as a clue that there's still plenty to figure out. Still, even he acknowledges that Pluto's path could spell trouble if things change enough. Tyson is not making predictions for fun. He's looking at data, observing shifts, and acknowledging that, while unlikely, a collision between Pluto and Neptune is not at all impossible. If something throws off Pluto's orbit, say, a passing comet or a gravitational nudge from another planet it could one day end up on a crash course. The big questions are, would Neptune be okay? Would Pluto survive the impact? Or would we get a brand new mass of ice and rock where both planets used to be? While there's no firm proof that such a collision is approaching, Tyson's cautious warnings point to the fact that planetary motion is no joke. The more we understand, the better we can prepare. This isn't just science fiction. It's a reminder that we're still in the early chapters of understanding our solar system's future. Studying how planets, moons, and other objects all interact helps us plan for the long haul. How long Pluto will remain on its winding path or veer off into something much more chaotic is still unknown. But its story keeps us hooked. 
It's the tale of a tiny world dancing between peace and disorder, demonstrating to us that even the oddest objects in space can have an important role to play. When Pluto was first spotted, it was just another speck at the point where everything ends. But now, it's a symbol for the surprises space holds, for how far science has come, and for the mystery that still surrounds the universe. Despite the debates over whether Pluto ought to be considered a planet, one thing is certain, it grabbed our inquisitiveness and never let go. As telescopes get stronger and computers get faster, we'll keep uncovering more about Neptune, Pluto, and the enigmatic mechanics that bind them. Every new bit of data brings us one step closer to comprehending what will happen to our solar system in the end. Whether a collision is coming or not, Pluto's strange, swerving voyage offers us a front row seat to the strangeness and wonder of the universe. And that is a journey well worth following. The adventure into space has barely begun, and Pluto, with all its quirks and irregularities, remains a key player in that story. Even though it's small, cold, and far removed from our core solar system, it is a symbol of something much bigger, our never-ending curiosity and drive to explore the unknown. Each time we study Pluto's orbit, its strange dance with Neptune, or where it belongs in the Cooper Belt, we're really asking deeper questions regarding the nature of space and time. Are the orbits of other planets just as bizarre? Could some further celestial body beyond Pluto be pulling strings behind the scenes? These aren't just sci-fi musings. They're the kind of questions that lead to real discoveries. The idea of a potential Pluto-Neptune collision, while far-fetched and unlikely any time soon, forces us to re-examine how fragile orbits can be and how little we actually know about the long-term behavior of the solar system. Pluto's current course, after all, is a result of billions of years of gravitational tug-of-war. Even a minuscule push from an unidentified force a passing star or some mysterious force could push things off balance. That is where contemporary space science excels. Using ever-advancing computer models, researchers can simulate how Pluto's path might be disrupted centuries down the road. These are not only academic exercises. They help us prepare for a wide range of cosmic possibilities. Understanding orbital dynamics at this level may even assist us in identifying hazardous asteroids. Planning interplanetary missions, or predicting how Earth itself might change eons ahead, everything is connected, and we can't forget the human element in this story. Researchers such as Neil deGrasse Tyson and Michio Kaku aren't just warning us about Neptune and Pluto for dramatic effect. They are urging the general public to become interested in the way the universe works. They want people to understand that space isn't static. It exists, always shifting and full of patterns and a few surprises. That is what makes the mechanics of space so fascinating. It's a collection of stringent physical regulations and unpredictability similar to a cosmic game of chess played over thousands of years. Pluto, despite no longer being officially labeled a planet, continues to inspire. It highlights the fact that science is never finished. It's always being revised, updated, and challenged. Pluto's downgrade to a dwarf planet sparked debates around the globe, not just about astronomy, but specifically about how we define and categorize the world around us. That conversation alone brought space science into mainstream culture in a way that few other discoveries have. At the heart of everything is a powerful yet simple concept. Even space's smallest object can teach us something enormous. Pluto, with its icy crust, slender atmosphere, and wildly tilted orbit, may seem like an outlier, but that's precisely why it is so significant. The more we study these oddballs of the cosmos, the more we realize just how diverse and dynamic our solar system really is.